So with that, we're going to move on to problems in two dimensions. And we're going to start off with problems with scalar field variables. That is, you know, u is still a scalar, just like it was in 1D. Um, and we'll, we'll start here and develop the model equations. Uh, and then we'll move on to, you know, problems where u is a vector field, and this will lead us into plane elasticity. Uh, but keep in mind that, uh, you know, the, the pressure equation for, like, flow in a porous media is a scalar problem. So the, this part of the solution will come back into play later when we want to solve couple problems. So one key difference in, in from 1D to 2D is that we have to consider the discretization. So, you know, in 1D, uh, we basically just have a line, and we can always discretize a line exactly, uh, quite easily, right? There's no reason that we'd ever have any discretization error or, you know, no mesh error in a, in a 1D. But, of course, in 2D, you know, we have a body, and then we have to choose how we break it up. Uh, we typically use, you know, triangles or quadrilaterals. And while we can get close, we can never cover the body exactly. I mean, so right here, uh, you know, we'd have some error in, in the body, uh, in the, an error between the discretization and the exact geometry of the, bar, of the body, okay? And so we have some choices to make, and those choices to make are element type, right? We didn't have to make that choice here. I mean, the element type in a 1D is always a line segment, right? But here, uh, you know, typically we're talking about a choice between triangles and quadrilaterals. So a quadrilateral would be something like this. Right? And, you know, the other choice we have is the number of elements and the degree of accuracy. What I mean by accuracy is the interpolant order. So just like in 1D where I showed examples of linear and quadratic interpolants, we can also have linear and quadratic or cubic even interpolants in 2D. And of course, uh, things are quite difficult or quite a bit more difficult in 2 and 3D because, uh, for example, if you have a quadratic triangle, and I'll show an example later, but uh, a linear triangle just has nodes at the corners, but a quadratic triangle will have mid-side nodes. And these nodes have to conform, so as you go on constructing a mesh, these mid-side nodes have to line up as well, as not just the endpoints. And, and this can be, can be difficult in some cases. And when it comes to the making these choices, uh, there's no magic answer. It, it comes from the experience of the analyst uh, who's guided by his technical insight into the problem, into the physics, and, you know, his own experience. And so, you know, I'll give you some general rules. And, you know, the first one is that the element should characterize the governing equations. And what I mean by that is, you know, if the governing equation is, say, a fourth order PDE, you can't use a, uh, you know, a linear, a linear uh, triangle uh, to mesh it. It's not going to have enough, uh, the interpolant is not of high enough order to characterize the government, governing equation, right? Um, you know, the second thing is that, you know, the number and the shape and the type what I mean by that is the, the tri or quadrilateral uh, should represent the domain as accurately as possible. So in other words, you know, for this potato I drew over here, um, you know, you, you wouldn't just want to use two large triangles. That's going to obviously be a, a very bad discretization for that. 
So you want this to lead to as accurate a discretization as possible. The mesh density should cover areas of high gradients. So what we mean here is, now we're just talking about scalar fields here, but a good example is actually if you go into elasticity, um, if you had a body like this that was, say, fixed along the bottom and a force applied here, you know there's going to be a singularity in stress here or high stress concentration here. So if you were going to mesh this thing, what you'd want to do is not use a very, very coarse mesh in the region of high gradients, but you can use a coarse mesh away from that and in the areas of high gradients, like in this corner, then you can refine the mesh to use a very fine mesh in these regions. All right, so that's what we mean. We want to, and you know, it, it would even be finer than what I'm drawing here to have a good representation of the gradients. And when you do grade the mesh, you, you want to grade away uh, gradually. So if you do have a really fine mesh in some region uh, that you're interested in, uh, you don't want to immediately go to very coarse mesh. You want to you want to grade away from it gradually. So that's kind of the fourth rule of thumb is grade away gradually. <coughs> 